this is the second video on logic. And I start off with a couple of statements. Here we go. If I stay up late, then I will eat more food. If I eat more food, then I will gain weight. And if I gain weight, then I will become an offensive lineman. Now, you might see this right away of what I'm about to do. Um, I'm going to tie these together. Let's say that L is if I stay up late, then I will eat more food. So if L, then F. If I eat more food, then I will gain weight. And if I gain weight, symbolically, would be an offensive lineman. Let's say, oh. So you could conclude that if I stay up late, then I will be an offensive lineman. That's called a connection through, through I, I made a connection through the conditional statements and ended up with a new conclusion. Notice that my conclusion here is in fact a conditional statement also. Now, I'm not talking about truth. Uh, I'm not gonna start staying up late and you know leave my job and become an offensive lineman because we don't, we're not discussing truth. We're discussing the, the logic of tying these statements together. This is known as the law of syllogism, and that's a good Scrabble word for you. If you accept P then Q is true, and you also accept Q then R is true, then you must logically accept P then R as true. And in uh, mathematics, we often see this in the uh, form of equality. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then therefore A must be equal to C. That's a transitive property of equality. So it works very, very similarly. Okay, so there's the law of syllogism. Now I am going to move on and talk about four conditional statements that are kind of related to each other. The first conditional statement is, if a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent. The second, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral are congruent, then it is a rectangle. If a quadrilateral is not a rectangle, then the diagonals are not congruent. And if the diagonals of a quadrilateral are not congruent, then it is not a rectangle. The first one, if we, we will call this a conditional statement. That's, that's where we started off with. This is our original. And that looks like, we'll just say, Q, then if, if we'll call it, no, excuse me, if it's a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent. So if it's a rectangle, then D. So I'm saying I should write my key out. We'll let R be quadrilateral is a rectangle. Let D be diagonals are congruent. That's a key for that. All right. The next statement, it takes the diagonals of a quadrilateral are congruent. So that's a D. Then it's a rectangle, R. So it reversed the statement. That, you may recognize, is called the converse. And that's the converse of my conditional statement. The next one, if a quadrilateral is not a rectangle, so not a rectangle, I'll write that as not a rectangle, then the diagonals are not congruent. So that's the same order as my conditional statement, but now I put a negation in both of them. That is called the inverse. And then finally, if the diagonals of quadrilateral are not congruent, diagonals not congruent, 
then it is not a rectangle. All right, and this one is called the contrapositive. So yes, all of these are related, and these are the names that is that are associated with that. Um, now let's look at. I'm going to draw a Venn diagram like we did last time uh, for if R then D. So if it's R, then it must be D. Notice that, right? So this is still if R then D. And if you recall, I could also look at this and say, well, if we know it's not R, could it be D? And in fact, it could. So that doesn't help me. If I know it's D, does it, let's see, I, I, we'll, we'll say this is, this is not my truth statement. If it's D, does it have to be R? Obviously not. If it's not R, does it have to be not D? So if it's in this, if it's not in this set, could it be over here? Yes, it could. So that's not necessarily true. And then the finally, the contrapositive, if it's not D, does it have to be not R? And in this case, it would be. If it's not in D, well, it can't be in R. So yay. The contrapositive and the conditional statement actually match. If this is true, so should this be true. And I take note here, these two are related in the same fashion. The inverse, excuse me, the converse and the inverse are also negations and swip swaps of each other, right? So these two are always going to match also the contrapositive of each other. And the law of contrapositive states that if you accept P then Q is true, then you must also accept not Q then not P as also true. So I've changed the order and negated both of them. Those two statements match. So I have a couple examples here and this is what we're going to be doing in class. Uh, and you identify what kind of logic is going on. So if A, then B, and if B, then not C, therefore A, then not C. So that goes, and I often will look if yeah, there's a path, right? The arrows show which way you have to go. A, then B, B, then C. That is syllogism. E, then F, not F, then E. That's changed the order, negated to both. That is is law of contrapositive. A then B, and it's not B, therefore not A, even though that looks similar to this one, it's not the same. This is from last time. This one is modus tollens. Different. Notice that syllogism and contrapositive both end with a conditional statement. And here we go, another one, A then C, C then D, not D then C, wait, A then C, C then D. Whew. Looks like I could say that, but that's not what they said. That's not what this says. This says not D then Z. I could do, make a syllogism statement. That would be A then D, but that's not what it says. It says not D then not C. Oh, that's that's negation, that's, excuse me, that's negate and, and changing the order of that one. That's contrapositive. So don't worry what you can do just write what has been done and identify what has been done. And that's what's on the check for understanding. In the check for understanding, determine whether or not each logical argument is valid. If it is valid, state what reasoning is used. If it is not valid, write no valid conclusion. There are four examples. All right. Good luck. See you tomorrow.